6 o'clock right here on Big Breakfast. Today FM, today is hit music. Hey, I'm Pauline. And I'm Alan. Tune in to The Breakfast Show on Today FM with Pauline and I every weekday morning. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Right here on Today FM, today is hit music. Today FM, today is hit music. Fiji First Leader Warenge Baini Marama tells voters in New Zealand that the 2013 constitution protects all Fijians. Fiji United Freedom Party is still working on its manifesto. And Women's Minister Dr Chico Loveni says resource centres are showing results. Welcome to FPC News, I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Fiji First Leader Varenge Baini Marama has had a successful visit to Auckland, New Zealand, fundraising for his party. The meeting in Manuka, Auckland, New Zealand was attended by more than 1,000 people. However, as Edwin Nunn reports, there were small pockets of people protesting against Baini Marama. This is true democracy. This is Varenge Baini Marama's first trip overseas, campaigning for Fiji First. He spoke before a jam-packed Vodafone event center in Manukau, Auckland, while members of the Fiji Democracy First Movement held banners and placards outside. It is always of interest to me to see my Indo-Fijian brothers and sisters as part of those protesting groups. Because this is what that has brought everybody together and identified everyone, especially the Indo-Fijians, as Fijians. The majority of the former Fiji residents inside the auditorium were supporters of Fiji First. However, there were people in the crowd who were opposed to Mbani Marama. They associate Fiji First with my government and they have been removed for some crop practice or another. They have not been satisfied with what my government has done, probably in terms of their district infrastructure. So I, I have to understand all this. Throughout his speech, there were interruptions from the crowd, but there were even more people shouting in support of Fiji First. Bani Marama also highlighted that capital work has been going on for a few years and has seen an improvement in living standards. The political parties are going around telling people that that's the work of government, to put in electricity, water and road. And I agree. But I tell my supporters, but when next time they come around, ask them, which government has ever done this at this pace? At this rate, the Fiji First Leader spoke at length about the provisions in the 2013 Constitution that promote equal citizenry, protect Itoke land, and protect Fiji from any future political upheavals. What is the guarantee you that vote will me, not you vote, me, you vote me into Parliament. That will not be. Edwin Nand, FBC News. In two weeks, Varenga Baini Marama will be in Sydney, Australia for another fundraiser. Meanwhile, Fiji First is promising to release a visionary manifesto next week when it names its remaining 29 candidates. Speaking at a campaign rally at Koravuto in Nandi, Dr. Mehender Rendi hinted at some of the policies, pointing out the health sector, more plans for education and a new policy on workers' contribution towards FNPF. Christopher Chand has more details. The launch of the manifesto will be the most important point of the entire Fiji First campaign with just under 37 days before the elections. We have made education free. Wait till you see the manifesto. We have got some more thing about the children in school who are struggling to have... No, um, I don't want to say it in camera. Wait till the manifesto comes. Wait, wait till you see the pro pro progress we have in the manifesto for every cross-section of the people in this country. 
Dr. Reddy has revealed if elected, Fiji First plans to have resources for major surgical operations to be carried out in the country. He was responding to questions about the national minimum wage and VAT when he indicated a new plan for FNPF contributions. I can assure you that the national minimum wage will go up. I will not give you a timeline. In the report, we have the timeline. Till you see the manifesto next, next week. Then, apart from the $2, there's something else for you. People like you, all the workers in this country. It's an amazing thing. No one ever thought about it. That's tied up in the manifesto. Dr. Reddy maintains the Fiji First stand that VET will have to remain at 15%. Go and convince your family members, your relatives, your villages, your people in the Ramayan Mandali Church that look, Let's all hold hands together. Only four years. Give up NFP. Give up Labour Party. Give up Sodelpa. For four years. Four years. Give Fiji, Fiji First a blank check. You see what we will deliver. We want 50 seats. We want 50 seats. Give us 50 seats. The party is expected to announce its remaining candidates on Tuesday and at the same time unveil its manifesto. Christopher Chant. FBC News. Newly registered Fiji United Freedom Party is still to come up with its policies and strategies on issues facing Fiji. Party President Jagat Karuna Ratne says for now they have a concept that the party will work for its manifesto. Josephine Navula has the details. With 37 days left until polling day, the Fiji United Freedom Party hasn't completed its manifesto. President Jagat Karuna Ratne says it shouldn't take much more time. As I said, we have a model and a concept that we are going to come up with and that will explain in detail how we are going to uh, get into that issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Clearly we have, we have done our manifesto and the, and the concept and the model around that issue. FP will hold an AGM to elect a party leader and executives going into the election. But there is no set time frame for this. All it says is executives and candidates will be finalized by the 15th of this month three days before nominations close. Basically we are open for anything, uh, even for the candidates for that matter, even for the leadership. Uh, anyone who has the caliber and the determination and the courage to take out up the, up the values of the party. Um, we don't have a, a predetermined setup, mm -hmm. so everything is open. Karuna Ratni has already said the party isn't in the race to win the election but is building up for future polls. The FUFP was registered just over a week ago. Just Finavula, FBC News. Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kayum has refuted allegations the Registrar General is no longer allowing the registration of Matangali, Yavusa, Koro and Tikina of all Itoke Fijians. He says this misinformation is being spread through social media and other mediums by political parties and their supporters. The AG says the registration of births and marriages has always been done under the Birth, Deaths and Marriages Act and it has never changed. Sayed Kayum also refutes allegations that a person can't add the title of Ratu or Andi, saying any Itoke person can register their children in this manner. The Registrar General is duty-bound under the Act to record traditional titles and other relevant information and will continue to do so. And still to come on FPC News, Dina Roswell Madden crowned Miss Digicel Bulla 2014. How are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin, but 
before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let him get me started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat, because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> Hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pivin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on Gold, Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Turn, Turn us on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to FBC News. The Women's Welfare Ministry is confident that assistance to resource centres around Fiji are being put to good use. Minister Dr Chiko Luveni says regular visits are conducted by their offices to ensure that no one misuses the facilities. Shirin Lata reports. The Women's Resource Centres are designed to boost financial and income generating opportunities for women in rural and remote communities. There are regular visits conducted by the monitoring unit at the ministry to evaluate achievements. We are very happy to have resource centres. It, it, it was the infrastructure that they needed so that they are able to manage their programmes well and also give them the opportunity to, uh, to lead and to uh, uh, have um, skill building and training and uh, all the activities that is needed uh, for them. Uh, they have an institution uh, where they can uh, do, have this done. The idea is that once women produce quality products, the ministry will be able to market it for exports as well. The women have been trained on financial literacy through Westpac Bank and now able to keep financial records. Not only that, uh, but because the centres are active, we have our training, uh, training up, uh, offices that continue to conduct training in these resource centres, uh, whereby they are able to continue to be uh, uh, linked up to our ministry. Dr. Luveni says the facilities are a great incentive for women to work together and contribute towards the development of their communities. Member of the villages uh, itself was looking after the um, community, the resource centre. The resource centre, uh, resource centre is uh, just uh, beside the community hall in the Nanjali village, and uh, almost 60 women they attend the almost program in the Nanjali village. It uh, generates income. Anyone who wants to use the resource centre, it has been hired for like ten dollars to twenty dollars. For the resource it, it generates the income back to the women's ministry. There are 78 women's resource centers in Fiji with 30 new ones planned for next year. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Tavuni Las Dina Adles Roswell Madden was crowned Miss Digicel Bula last night. The 24-year-old won the pageant ahead of 11 other contestants and the week-long carnival to help raise funds for charity. Christopher Chand reports. Roselle Madden is still in shock and says the reality of becoming Miss Bula 2014 is still sinking in a day after the crowning. Well, at first I was very surprised. I, I had a very great experience with the contestants and meeting up with new people to all the morning teas that we went to and lunches. And just standing there on stage when they called my name, I was just shocked and emotional at the same time, but I'm proud that I was crowned the Digicel Miss Bula 2014 because this goes back to everyone that supported me. This is, this is their crown, not mine. Madden, who wants to become a flight attendant, grew up in Taviuni and only moved to Nandi last year. She works at Tanoa International Hotel and spent her day in church today. Winning Miss Bula was never on my mind. I just went because I wanted to gain experience and also I just wanted to feel what it would be like being a contestant. And I'm really glad I joined because first of all, a week after I signed up for the Bula Festival, I sent an email to the committee and said that I'll be rejecting the offer, like I didn't want to take part. Madden says she had initially wanted to pull out as a contestant because she didn't want to be in the limelight. But she's glad she chose to take part. Then I decided no, this is what I have to do for myself if I need to progress in life. I need to go out there and show the world who Roselle Madden is and what she's capable of doing. 
Family members reenacted her crowning moment this afternoon. She's slowly getting used to being the center of attention. The Miss Charity Prize went to Ajnita Lal and Miss Personality was won by Tali Modevakada. Christopher Chand, FBC News. In our successful Fijian segment today, FBC News profiles women who are providing for their families through small business ventures. Many of these women gathered in Suva for Fiji's first National Women's Expo. Rashika Kumar spoke to some of them. More than 2,000 women from 500 community groups celebrating their success. They are using their traditional skills to start up small business which helps look after the family. One such group is Nambili Women's Club from Rewa. Sarote Rokoda was taught traditional pottery by her grandmother. Rokoda says that they set up this group just so they could come to the expo and benefit from the opportunities that come up. In just one week, they raised over $600. The women's groups came from as far as Boroboro Island in Maduwata province to the north of Vanua Levu. They produce virgin coconut oil, soaps, mats and fans. According to club president Varani Sese Tukasa, they've been able to make over $500 in profit in three days. The club has some good plans for the future. To make um, one tank and one house to build a... To make it properly the business to be going. And we want the, um, want the boat too because if we stay in the island, we can sell the thing to the, to the Lambasa. The Delena Munji Munji Kain Dalai Tokato Women's Club from Nawavatu, Naita City has been running for five years and its members are experts in weaving mats and baskets. They also make coconut oil. The group has had a rocky past but the expo has been a good experience. So this help us a lot in our, you know, in our, uh, in our family life. Yeah, we are supporting our husbands for the children. These are just some examples of how women in rural communities have taken charge and become income earners in their households. Micro enterprise is seen as an area with real growth opportunities. There is money to be made if these women continue to work hard. The Korolevu Women's Club travelled to Suva from Nosori Highlands in Nandi. Its members have never had the type of exposure and learning experience that the expo provided. The club's ambition is to eventually set up a store in Nandi town. We really want to have one uh, handicraft centre so that we can sell our own. The, we want to move down to the Muslim because we're staying in Nandi town. So you want to have one handicraft in Nandi town. The Nikambula Lotoka based Kuripita model town started in 2005 with only 25 members and has now grown to 45. The group's handmade vow angels have proven quite popular with young girls and all the profit from the expo will be shared among the members. It helps to benefit in our family family income as uh, some of uh, the club members are single moms. It helps to benefit to pay school fees, um, school materials for the children. If the success of the expo is anything to go by, women groups will surely look forward to future events, not just to market their products, but also learn some trick of the trade, promote their business to some new clients and even learn how to run a small business. Rashka Kumar, FPC News. Well, stay tuned ahead in FPC Sports, Waratah's coach impressed with rugby league convert Tangele Nayara Voro. And women's under 18 hockey side to use China Youth Olympics as a building block. Mmm, Bollywood hero Panti Re. Mmm, mm. ah, mm. get this. Mm. Ah, mm. Hero, 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 sapna dekhe la band karo. Kya 
करो यार सबको आती नहीं मेरी जाती नहीं मिर्ची मस्त मॉर्निंग मैं हूँ अश्विन सिंह हाय मैं हूँ काजल शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे सिक्स एम टू नाइन एम मिर्ची एफ एम एट रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर आपका स्वागत है बच्चों की दुनिया में हमेशा की तरह आज भी हम आपके लिए कहानियाँ और कविताएं लेकर आए हैं और बच्चों आप हमें कॉल भी कर सकते हैं नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर मंडे टू फ्राइडे तीन से लेकर चार बजे तक बच्चों की दुनिया में और चार ऐसी लेकर सात बजे तक मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ FPC Sports tonight the Fiji women's under 18 hockey side is anticipating a tough outing at the Youth Olympic Games in China. The team has gone through some grueling training sessions to get its fitness and skills up to par with the best but are wary of the type of opposition that awaits them. Challenge though that that has more. The long wait for the Youth Olympic Games ends tomorrow for the national under 18 hockey side when it departs for China. The young team is realistic about its chances against higher ranked sides. Right now, aim in China is just to achieve our gold. Um, medal would be a bonus for us in China. Fiji is pulled alongside Argentina, Netherlands, South Africa and Japan. The camaraderie within the side will be one of its strong points come game time. Well, really, the team, I think we've done so well together. Uh, like, guidance from coach, captain, everyone's helping each other. So, like, really, the senior players are, like, as equal as to all the other players in the team. So, everyone's just doing very well. There's not really much that we can help them on because everyone's helping each other in this team. That's the great thing about this team. The coach of the side is happy with the girls' preparation over the past few months and hopes the public can rally behind the team in China. Sure, we know that the country is uh, relying on us to produce the results. Um, what is more important that we go out there and show them that Fiji is a country. You know, we're going there to make a mark, and um, whatever the results we bring back, it will be. We, I am certain it will be to the satisfaction of the Fijian public. The side will depart for China tomorrow, together with the rest of the Team Fiji contingent. Talent of the Kazakh FPC Sports. The Nandranga rugby side displayed outstanding skills in stern defence to hand Suva a 40-22 loss in the Skipper Cup semi-finals yesterday. The Stallions outsourced Suva by six tries to two to seal a spot in the finals. Here are the highlights. The way it's infield to Naururi. He again gives it across onto the right. There's Rawatha. Rawatha close to the line. Very near to it. Caught just short. Nanunga are trying to get it away. They get it out onto the flank. And Nanunga go in right over the far side. <laughs> Forward goes and Davar into the back line. Here's an effort going through here. Tremendous work by Naito Ikata. And he's taken to the ground. Feeds it back to Captain Nasinga. Nasinga in and there goes Lungai. And uh, dragging the defence with him, and Suva have taken it off him. He's going forward there on Timbera, and Bear has gone over, and Bear is the bearer of a try for Suva. And on it went Rituva, linking up and out into the middle. A breakthrough, there was nothing Levu. He got it across onto the left flank, and they're going down the left flank. And a neat one there was was uh, the, the Nanranga centres to its uh, Buller. He gets it away well, and coming through the middle of the drive, there's nothing oh. Levu. <laughs> he pushed off two of them, turned sideways to them, slid through the gap and Nathangi Levu. The second semi-final clash between Neta Siri and Nandi will be held next weekend at Ratuda Kambau Park. The Nandera Panthers rugby league side continued its fine form in the top eight grade of the Vodafone Cup competition after thumping top line Warriors 36-2 yesterday. The Panthers are currently second on the points table behind Saru Dragons and registered a comfortable win over the struggling Warriors side. Meanwhile, in other games in the top eight grade, Burenitu Cowboys upset the Police Sharks. Saru Dragons defeated the number one Broncos and defending champion Sambeto Roosters edged the McCoy Bulldogs. In football, the Tailevu Neta Siri football side scored a 3-2 win against Savu Savu at Ganila Park in the first leg of the Fiji Sun Skipper Tuna National Football League Premier Final. 
The victory has strengthened the Tangi Vonalangi Code side's bid for automatic qualification to the Super Premier grade next season. The second leg of the Premier final will be held next weekend with the venue yet to be decided. Well, meanwhile, in Super Premier games held today, Nandronga upset Suva, Rewa defeated Ba and Lambasa were held to a draw by Navua. In weather, some showers were experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Well, temperatures were fairly even. Lambasa and Nandi had a high of 30 degrees this afternoon. Tomorrow's forecast is for more afternoon showers in Suva and Savu Savu. It should be fine elsewhere. As for the outlook for Tuesday, few showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands fine elsewhere. Recapping our headlines tonight, Fiji first leader Vorenge Baini Marama tells voters in New Zealand that the 2013 constitution protects all Fijians. Fiji United Freedom Party is still working on its manifesto and Women's Minister Dr Chico Luveni says resource centres are showing results. Time now for our Fijian Speak segment, the question, who do you trust to take Fiji forward? I trust the Banimarama government because they've done a lot of uh, changes in our community. Fiji First! Uh, myself, I trust Fiji First because this government is helping too much. I support uh, Banimarama. Now you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes.fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FPC to 777. That's all from us tonight. Join Jackie and the team from tomorrow evening. I'll see you again next weekend. Well, stay with us. Up next is this week's For the Record, where our panelists speak to the leader of the People's Democratic Party, Felix Anthony. Good night. Ningina magatu mena nungu benga rawi mai na moni tiki na warombu ka na rua kina wana keloko na ngona ni rongo mane be sana ba kina wono na ngona ni rongo sere na radio Fiji one na ndomo ibiti na vunga ni benga ni anu. So what was the question again? Oh, why why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Bulubunaka, my name is Rio, your host and DJ right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music.